And we're live. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome or welcome back to the Kia Hyundai channel. My name is Gabby. And I'm Charlotte. And today we're filming the 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe Ultimate Calligraphy, but we're doing it in depth. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to talk a little bit about why this might be better than the Kia Sorento, which is its direct competitor. And that's definitely a hot take, it's too. A very, very hot take. So, of course, we're going to give you a full walkthrough of the exterior, interior, talk about the specs, the powertrain, and the performance that this vehicle offers. We're also going to explain some of the different functions and what has changed drastically for the Santa Fe for its 2024 redesign. Uh-oh. Oh, the gimbal is gimbling. We're off to a good start. Off I promise you guys, not the entire video should be like this. I hope. Okay, so in true Kia Hyundai channel fashion, that just happened. <laughs> uh, but we're also gonna give you a full um, kind of intro. If you are watching in the future and you wanna skip this, you can. Around the three or four minute mark, that's when we'll actually get into the walkthrough. So Charlotte, why do we do these videos? We do these videos for three different reasons. The first reason we do these videos is for those of you who may own Kia or Hyundai product, we want you guys to be the own experts on your vehicles, which mm -hmm. is why we do tips and tricks, reviews, and show you what all of those crazy buttons do on your vehicle. Mm -hmm. The second reason is if you are searching for a new car or a new to you vehicle, why not consider Kia or Hyundai as a brand? They've done a lot of really cool stuff in the past couple of years that I think will genuinely impress you. Uh, Santa Fe is definitely a testament of that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> the third reason is if you want a new Kia or Hyundai, why not buy it from us? Myself and Gabby are here at Brantford Kia, but we also have Brantford Hyundai and Owen Sound Hyundai as a part of our dealer group. So if you want to get into a new Santa Fe, we want to connect you with them and help you. We also do not charge any type of market adjustment fee. No. Woo! Woo! All right, now with that being said, let's get into the walkthrough of the Hyundai Santa Fe. I'm going to turn those lights back on because they shut off. And... We'll start off with the front end of the vehicle. Ooh. All right, so first things first, the center paint color is called Serenity White. It is a pearl paint and it looks stunning. Today, today. <laughs> but number one, it was rain kicked this car out for a little bit while we filmed another one, so it's a bit dirty, but hopefully you guys can see past that. Um, we're in very low budget here. <laughs> Looking at the front end of this vehicle, you can see we have a lot of H motifs. So taking a look at your new revamped headlights, you can see an H, but you can also see that that is a really, really bright LED. And not only is it really bright, it is really smart because this vehicle comes with intelligent high beam assist, meaning that this vehicle will turn on or shut off its high beams depending on what the ambient area is around you. So if you enter a city and you have sufficient light around you, high beams off. If you go back into the countryside where it's dark, they come right back on. So pretty smart cookie this car is. Now taking a look at the rest of the vehicle, the longer you look, the more H's you're going to pick up. So even over here, you can see for our bumper area, it's an H motif. We also have a ton of beautiful design choices. So taking a look at our blacked out grille, our active air shutters. So they pop open and close depending on what the vehicle needs. And in the very center, we even have a front camera. Now on the ultimate calligraphy trim, this is where you're going to see everything that the Santa Fe has to offer, whether that be comfort, tech, or just performance. And it's really nice to see features like a 360 camera. We also have front parking sensors, a radar plate over here that's utilized for a ton of features like your forward collision avoidance, smart cruise control, and even highway drive assist number two. What's highway drive assist number two, you may ask? So glad you asked. So not only is it going to keep your car a safe distance far ahead of you, it's also going to take you up to a complete stop and do lane changes for you. Above that, it's actually going to incorporate machine learning. So what is machine learning, Charlotte? It I don't means know. <laughs> the vehicle gets smarter the more you drive it. Absolutely. So it's going to pick up how you like to drive and how everything else is going on around you to make the vehicle smarter and more like a human if a human was driving. Best part is though, you don't actually have to drive it. Well, you do have to pay attention, but the car will give steering adjustments, do lane changes for you, and of course, keep you at a safe distance. We'll pop the hood, talk about the powertrain, because this powertrain is one of my favorites that the Kia Hyundai lineup has to offer. You can see that these will turn off LEDs. that climate control because it's so noisy. Flashing a little bit on the camera, and there's another look at the grill. Yeah, the grill is gorgeous. Full profile H. And it's blacked out, so you're gonna see a lot of dark elements on the ultimate calligraphy. One of my favorite things, and this is such a little thing, the hood is hydraulic. Aww, so the yeah. Kia Sorento, like I said at the beginning of this video, we're going to talk a little bit about how this might, might be better than the Kia Sorento. There's one point that I think the Santa Fe certainly wins in. When it comes to motor though, the Sorento and the Santa Fe are going to share the same. So this is a 2.5 liter four cylinder turbocharged gasoline engine. You're going to get 277 horse with this powertrain and 311 pound feet of torque. So it's a little bit less horsepower than the Kia Sorento would get, but you don't feel it. 
Driving this vehicle, there's absolutely no hesitation when it comes to throttle response, and the best part is you actually have customized drive modes that you can change your vehicle to performance. So if you like a more sporty feel, flip it into sport. If you want something more efficient, put it into smart mode. You can cycle through all of them, find out which one you like best, and the best part is you can change them on the fly. On top of that, this vehicle is also all-wheel drive. So you're going to get H-Trax all-wheel drive system, which essentially is going to be a front-wheel drive bias until it senses slippage. So if I'm driving on a road like today where it's just regular weather, there's nothing too crazy, it's going to be front-wheel drive, meaning this vehicle is going to be as efficient as possible. However, if I make a turn onto a road that is gravel or mud, the car will adjust itself as needed to make sure I'm getting that proper traction. For your mirrors, they're power folding, which means when I go to lock my car, they're gonna fold in all by themselves, but I can also shut it off if you're not a fan of that. You do have turn signal indicators and a camera on the very bottom. This camera is gonna show you exactly what's happening in your blind spot. So if you're someone who lives in the city, this is great for cyclists, but it's also good for parallel parking because you can see exactly where the curb is and where your beautiful, beautiful wheels line up. So let's take a look at the wheels. These guys are stunning. So you do get Pirelli tires in a beautiful blacked out design. This is exclusive to the Ultimate Calligraphy package. I really do like it. And uh, I think they knocked out of the park, honestly, with this one. Mm -hmm. um, again, I think I mentioned this a couple times already, but the calligraphy is going to give you a lot of dark elements. And usually dark elements are reserved for our rugged or off-road style vehicles. But I think they do a good job with this kind of style choice and making it still sleek. It doesn't look like it's too, eh. you know what I mean? <laughs> For our roof rails, they are raised, which again is usually reserved for that rugged type of vehicle. This one looks sporty, but it also still, it, it ties in nicely. It looks like a city car. You do get these um, assist handles. So this one's locked, but I'll show you on the other side, making it very easy to access your rooftop storage. And you might not even need to use a rooftop storage because this thing is huge. And we'll talk more about that once we get into the trunk. For gas, it is a turbocharged engine, but you only need a regular unleaded fuel. So good savings at the gas tank. And if you're comparing this to something like the Defender. That's something you won't be able to get in the Defender. Mm. <laughs> and the price point is much better on this one. Santa Fe and low profile lettering across the back end, again in that sleek black finish. This is the only model that is a six seater configuration on the Santa Fe lineup. So there's a little disadvantage, I would say, but the Kia Sorento is the same thing. If you're getting the top trim of the Sorento, only a six seater. I'm gonna move these mats here and let's take a look at our storage space. So I got one of our rear seats up. You can see you do get car seat tethers for the very car seat anchors, I should say, for the very back. If you want to knock it down, give the tether a pull. It's going to knock your headrest and then oh, you can give it a push. It goes completely flat and you can see if you don't have anybody sitting in your third row, this is an extremely, extremely spacious rear end. <laughs> and Charlotte, the rear end is a hot topic for this vehicle, right? It definitely is. And why is that? A lot of people are not loving the design and a lot of it has to do with the fact that this rear end is very flat. It but is flat. If you saw the trunk when it was up, you were almost at a 90 degree angle, which means you have a huge amount of opening space. Absolutely. Which like, I genuinely think if I was buying a dryer or washing machine on Marketplace, I'd be able to slip it in there no problem. Fit it in, not a problem. And again, I did kind of mention the lettering, but it was already opening. Now we can take a closer look at what the style looks like. <clears throat> oh boy, I'm losing my voice. <laughs> So Santa Fe written boldly. Camera back here, so that's your backup camera. Of course, when you throw your car into reverse, you're probably used to seeing that, right? What you're not used to seeing is this camera. What does this camera do? It is probably one of my favorite features that Kia and Hyundai have incorporated. It is a rear view camera. So you'll see it when we actually hop inside the car. Essentially, this camera is gonna pick up everything that's happening behind your car. And that way, if you do have a full house, if you're using all six seats, or if you have a bunch of cargo in your vehicle that would block your view out of the window, you have a six lane wide view of everything that's happening behind your car. You can raise it, lower it, whatever you need. It is so, so nice. So that's about it. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the trunk. Sorry, I closed it so early. You can adjust the opening height and speed as well too. <laughs> All right, H motif right underneath here, which is pretty cool. And again, the more you look at this vehicle, the more you'll find some. You do have air vents back here, something that the Sorento doesn't get. And you have USB-Cs. Located right over here, so almost hidden, you have a second row seating control. So if you'd like to power fold your second row down, check it out, it's truly powered. So you can knock them back up without going around to, you know, lift the seat up yourself. I never said it was fast but it is all automated. But we did say it was there. <laughs> we did say it was there. And then on the left-hand side, same thing. You get cup holders, you get air vents, and you even get a 12 volt charger. And, oh, sorry, I didn't even point this guy out. 
household outlet. So if you're camping with this vehicle, doing any sort of outdoor activity, you do have access to 115 volt hair dryer, griddle, kettle. The world's your oyster. All right, let's come on over to this side. The light or sun is shining on it a little bit better. You can get a better look at the styling choices. Um, here's your assist handle. So you can see right now it's flush, but if I put my hand in there, it's a handle. Hop on, step on the wheel, step on the tire. I'm not gonna do it today. Charlotte loves doing this though. So I do. Maybe she'll do a Talk demonstration later. And you can easily reach up top. For your door handles, they're nice in body color, but if you take a closer look at the front too, so this will be driver and passenger, there's a little indentation there. And that indentation is going to allow you to have digital key to touch, meaning not only can I still unlock and lock my car without holding my key, as long as it's on me, it'll work, but I can also unlock, start, and drive my car utilizing my smartphone or my smartwatch. So you don't even have to have your keys with you anymore at all. You can also opt out of that if you're not a fan. Talked about the powertrain, didn't talk about the transmission. It's an eight speed wet type dual clutch with paddle shifters. Wet clutch, dual clutch transmissions scare a lot of people because they're different, but it operates like a regular automatic would in the sense that you don't actually have to change gears, even though you do have dual, two clutches, dual clutches. Um, there are a couple things you should know about a dual clutch if you are considering buying one. Don't worry, we've done a video on it and we will tag it down below. Don't be scared though, it's still really, really nice to have. Smooth shifting if you're used to it. <laughs> All right, Charlotte, you wanna hop inside? I'd love to. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now we get the opportunity to go inside. And something I love about this vehicle is the ultimate click for you really is ultimate and it's got everything. On the exterior, Gabby really showcased how it has still some of that rugged appeal that the XRT has, but inside we get to take a look at all of the premium or luxurious features that the luxury trim offers. And then the calligraphy also takes it a step further. So it really is rugged and then also, well, it's capable, but it's also super luxurious on the inside. Charlotte, would you say <clears throat> this is a true SUV? I would say it's a true SUV Why? because it is sport spacious. It is utility, utility and, and it is vehicle. a vehicle, <laughs> nice. SUV, uh, sporty. Ooh, we even have a piece of plastic on here too. Man, I'm like a squirrel, squirrel mentality today. That's premium. That's premium. There. Oh, so it's peeling the that? plastic. Got memory seats, and that's a cool new design for the memory seat button. Absolutely, and something else I love in this vehicle is we actually haven't seen the ultimate calligraphy in the black trim. We have seen it with the beige interior, but I love how everything on the inside, we're seeing those black elements again, so nice flush door handle, and also our memory seats. Look at the ambient lighting. It's very nice. You can barely see it from up here, but once you actually get under, it has a beautiful glow. Absolutely. Some of the other features that we're gonna have showcased on the driver's door is Gabby mentioned that we do have power folding mirrors and they are also electronically controlled, so you can adjust them using these uh, switches and toggles. All of your windows are going to be express windows and down at the bottom, we even have a premium sound system, which again, starts in this trim. When it comes to seating, we have a Napa leather seat, which is incredibly comfortable and you can really feel the difference in it. Um, you also have some really fun, more H embossing and detailing on the seats. And when it comes to the seats, we have so many different ways where you're able to configure them. So we've got your regular six-way power adjustable here, but you also have the inclusion of four-way lumbar support and you have a driver and knee extender and passenger relaxation seat or driver relaxation seat. Ooh, let's demo the relaxation. Let's demo the relaxation seat. Here we go. Let's see if it'll go for me. Oh, the car turned off. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Sweet. You can really tell that this is live. While Shout's figuring that out, I'll talk about towing capacity. This one is 3,500 pounds of towing oh, capacity. Baby. You do have dedicated tow <laughs> <laughs> features, <laughs> like trailer stability assist. Well, here's your driver's relaxation seat. <laughs> you look so relaxed. It took us three to five business days to get there, but it's fine. <laughs> I don't know why they have that in this car. It makes sense on an EV, know. but I mean, I'm not, not mad at it. No. <laughs> uh, but also along here, you can see some more touches of the ambient lighting. You can also see how wide the cabin truly is. And if you look, we've got our H here with, of course, the middle bar stretching all the way across the dash, really emphasizing that width. Sorry. There, you can see it a little bit better. I'm getting all up in your space. No, you're good. You're good, you're good. <laughs> uh, when it comes to over here, you're gonna have your electronic parking brake, also brightness adjuster, tailgate controls, and traction control. Now, we've got more H vents up top, 
And here you're actually going to have your fingerprint scanner. So not only can you link this to your driver profile, but it can be used to actually start the vehicle. We have yet to be able to test it out because we haven't had our own Santa Fe that we've been able to keep. They've all been sold units, but we're super excited. And make sure that you subscribe to see that when we do get ours. Mm -hmm. When it comes to steering, you have a super comfortable steering wheel, and I know that probably sounds a little odd. It is leather wrapped and fully heated, and the way it almost feels cushioned, it's so comfortable to drive, and you've had no problems. And again, we're seeing more darker satin chrome elements on here. Uh, for your steering wheel, you have your H and Morse code, so mm -hmm. instead of typical Hyundai badging, something a little bit different. And then over here, you're going to have your driving controls, where you'll be able to access cruise control, highway drive assist, lane keep assist, lane follow assist, and then of course our media controls on this side. And behind that, we've got our nice sporty paddle shifters, because we do have a column mounted shift by wire gear shift, which is right over here. So it's nice that even if you have a shift by wire, come around. yeah, you come around. Okay. <laughs> All right, can you guys count how many H's you see on the front end alone? There's a big one. <laughs> hey. Hey, Charlotte. Hey, girl. <laughs> like I was saying, now you can get a better look at that gear shift. And again, you've got the paddle shifters behind it. That way you are still able to manually shift gears should you desire to do so. When it comes to our screens in this vehicle, we're gonna have a dual 12.3 inch screens and they're gonna be running our new software, which also means we're gonna have simplified graphics. So I really love this setup. I think Hyundai does a really, really great interior. Even if you're not a fan of the exterior design on this vehicle, the interior knocks it out of the park for me every single time. And I'm excited that we're gonna be seeing this style of interior on more 2025s for Hyundai. So when it comes to some of the features, again, you're gonna have your electronic speedometer and tachometer and you'll be able to cycle through your various screens in the front. So again, lots of different ways that you're able to take a look through all of them. And then of course, I mentioned we have our infotainment screen, which is 12.3 inches as well. And we've got our new CCNC software. You can see how responsive this is. And the calligraphy is gonna give you a little bit more controls too. So for example, we're gonna have our button to showcase our seats. So in the left and right seat, we can also turn on the heated seats for them. We can also control the controls that sounds redundant for our second row and then also if we want to fold them down or not so again love that feature I think it's so cool that you can really control everything from the driver's seat so if you know you're picking somebody up and they're sitting in the second row you can turn on their heated seat mm -hmm. dang wouldn't this be a great uber car this would be a really good uber car yeah, this would five, be a really good five um, star every time hire somebody to drive me around car mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Um, also, of course, with the screen and the new software, that means we're going to have a wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which I'm super excited about, which also means you can wirelessly stream mine and Gabby's podcast, Trunk Talk, available wherever you get your podcasts. So again, tons of features in here. And then as we move down, again, this is the setup that we're really going to be seeing in more of our 2025 Hyundai models. And I love that they're integrating real switches and dials. So we've got real buttons up at the top for our media controls. And it also features a very handy search feature. So this is going to be new, but essentially what this is going to allow you to do is it acts as the vehicle's, um, basically like the vehicle's search engine. So you can search points of interest, contacts, media, um, also, if there's a specific feature you want to take a look at, like ambient lighting, and you can't find it in your screen, you can easily search for it, which again, I love, especially if this is your first new car that you've had in a while, because uh, there's been a lot of changes. Now, down here at the bottom is you're going to have your climate control. So heated and ventilated seats for the driver, heated steering wheel with two levels of, of heat, and I like that it gives me a little bit of feedback too. For our passenger, we're also going to have heated and ventilated seats. You've got rear climate control as well and then front and rear defrost. And in the front, you're also gonna have dual zone controls, meaning I can set my temperature to what I'd like and Gabby can set hers to what she would like. Down here, we're gonna have more of our driving features such as parking sensors, our rear view camera. So here you can also see those cameras that Gabby pointed around the vehicle at work and they're stitching together this picture to give us a full cohesive view of what is going on around the vehicle. Also, of course, our front camera, of which we've got many different angles, such as a wide view, your uh, mirrors, rear view, which will come up as you put the vehicle into reverse, and also with dynamic guidelines. And then Gabby was talking about towing capacity, and with towing capacity, obviously you're gonna need a hitch, and this is what we like to call our hitch camera, so if you are towing something, it's very nice to see how easily it lines up. It's pretty cool how it shows you what is being obstructed. So obviously both of our side mirrors are folded mm -hmm. in, so it's not showing the true image and my door is open and it's letting you know that. Pretty cool. Pretty smart car, but yeah. not a smart car. <laughs>
Uh, of course, we're going to have idle stop and go. Our vehicle just turned off. It's in accessory mode. And then here is going to be those drive and terrain modes, as Gabby mentioned. So with your drive modes, you're going to have the option for three, a normal sport and my drive, which is a customizable version, which you're able to fix, uh, set in your settings. For our terrain modes, we're going to have snow, mud, and sand. And exactly as Gabby described, if it detects any extra slippage while you're in these, it's going to give you a little bit more so even if you're not in a terrain mode, the car will still adjust itself, which is quite nice. Absolutely. And the nice thing too is you don't have to be in park to switch between them. You can adjust them on the fly. We also have auto hold. And then as we're taking a look in the center for the ultimate calligraphy, you have the option of not one, but two wireless phone chargers. Now you're really never going to need a cord if you're in this vehicle, which is pretty neat. But in the chance that you do want one and you want to connect with a wired car player, Android auto, you can do so or simply have it for charging. There's another USB-C here. And then this button here is something that is only on the ultimate calligraphy. And that is going to be your UV sanitation in your upstairs glove box. So essentially what this is, when I hit this button, it doesn't work when it's open, of course, but it does uh, utilize UV light. How cool would it be? We've talked about this already to use it as a cure for gel yeah, manicures. Listen, I do gel nails and I do them at home and I just want to be like, pop them in there. Yeah. I, I really want to know if it'll work, but <laughs> for cup holders, we have nice deep cup holders and tons of storage space in the center. The nice thing about the center console too, is it is bilateral. So I can open it from the front or it can be opened from the rear. There's also another glove box with a little storage shelf above it. No way. This one's a pretty good size. I will say in the glove box department, it's super handy to have that shelf over there. Yeah. What does this car not have, Charlotte? What does it not have? Yeah. Well, it's got a, oh, it does not have a sunglass holder. But there's so many other places to put sunglass shaped things. Yeah, you can even sanitize your sunglasses. Yeah, that's pretty handy. Beach. You can clean them up. The well, beach. The beach. This is the digital rear view mm -hmm. I was talking about. So it looks kind of crazy on video because it's almost like videoception, yeah. right? But um, if you're not a fan of it or if it doesn't work with your glasses, you can always flip it back into a mirror. You can see there's us. And of course, if you have kids sitting in the back and they're tall, you won't be able to see out your window. So that's where this comes in great. Or balloons. Handy. Yeah, balloons in your balloons. car. That's a real uh, thing I've had to deal with. Yep. <laughs> now, uh, Gabby, how many sunroofs do we have in this vehicle? One and two. two. But how many of them open? <laughs> how many of them open? One. <laughs> now that one does have a powered shade though. So if you would like to look out the window, that's powered, of course, it'd suck if you had to reach all the way back there. But um, can you imagine? <laughs> You're the only go gadget. One, the driver's the only one in the car, and you really <laughs> want to close that. But um, this one is manual, so you would have to reach in to pull that. The um, headliner is also a premium material, mm. almost suede-like, but a bit softer. I'd nice say. and nice and dark too, so keeping consistent with those dark elements. Mm -hmm. One thing I'll mention before we hop into the second row is we also have a lot more storage underneath. So this is a nice spot. So if you want to put your bag or something smaller, uh, definitely is great. You also have a 12 volt, so. Someone asked what happens when mud covers your cameras. Uh, so usually you'll get an alert if it's for any reason saying that, you know, the it's camera isn't able to pick up anything, you'll get an alert. Uh, you have doesn't... to clean it. <laughs> yeah, you just wipe it off. So I haven't really had that problem even with salt buildup and stuff like that in my Sportage, but that's a great question to ask. Just wipe it off. It'll alert you. And you'll see it. Yeah, you won't see anything. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this seat is folded. Just press that button and it goes right back up. This is a car for the patient, I will yeah, say. It teaches you patience. Not me, but <laughs> someone out there. So right. again, you can see some of the nice details on our seating and these seats, they are heated. And Gabby also showed that they are powered when it comes to moving them forward. They're also powered on the side so you can move it forward. You can move it backwards, the seat. And on our door window, we also have integrated sunshades. So that's quickly become one of my favorite features, especially as a parent. And they look a lot better than anything that you may pick up at Walmart or Canadian Tire. I love this clean look that they provide. OEM sunshades always look way better. True. Two cup holders too, eh, Shirley? Yeah, two cup holders and one down at the bottom. Very nice. So tons of space. You have uh, hooks, of course, for bags. You have a nice pocket here for privacy, which has a decent amount of stretch, so you can fit a good amount in there. And you're probably thinking, Charlotte, there's no rear air vents in this car. That is such a deal breaker. They're just call them mounted. Don't worry, they're there. Which is even better. Which is even better. It doesn't go straight to your knees, right? Yeah. And this way, you can also utilize some more hidden storage space. Mm -hmm. 
So that is a great feature there. And you'll notice, well, maybe not because the seat is kind of far up, but because how this vehicle is built, because it is a three row, is you have a little bit more usable leg room when it comes to here. So it's an all wheel drive vehicle. Typically that means we get a greater hump in the center because of the drive shaft. But the way this is set up is it's more like a step and you're stepping back into the third row. Mm -hmm. Now it does mean you're getting a little bit less leg room in the third row than of course you're gonna get in the second row. But what can you say for something that has a bonus row? And you do have more space in the second and third row than you do in the Kia Sorento, which is its competitor. I'll show these seats. You can actually power the recline and the actual bottom of the lift seat. Lift up the third row. Which isn't very common in the second row. And you can unlock the seat as well too. Sorry about the smudge. <laughs> but beautiful soft touch materials all throughout. Making this vehicle feel very, very premium. I would probably pick up one of these over a Palisade. I'm not going to lie. Ooh. Hot take. Guys, <laughs> hot take. All right. So to get into the back, you have this handy little sidestep and the seat moves itself up. Of course, if that seat wasn't so far back, we could move it a little further. And then you just mosey on down that way. Yep. And then you find Charlotte. <laughs> so it's super easy whether you are coming in through the middle aisle or also if you wanna jump in through the door, it's super easy to get in. You also on the back of these seats have some hooks too. So even if you're in the third row, you still have a spot to put like a bag or coat rack, sweater, whatever it is you want. Gabby already went through some of the features that we have back here, such as uh, we have rear climate control, we have rear vents, USB-Cs, dual cup holders, and I'll show you behind this seat the amount of space I get. So tons of headroom, despite having a second sunroof, tons of arm room, and this is very comfortable. Like I could see myself being comfortable back here. Of course, with a third row, you're not gonna have as much legroom as you are in the second row, but I still think that this is a decent amount and quite comfortable. Mm -hmm. Also, seatbelt clips. Seatbelt so. clips, but there's also, it's so hard to film because it's dark now, our light's turned off. There's a little handle over here, so if you're mm. climbing into the back, you actually have somewhere to hold on to. Or if you're coming out, you can also grab onto it. Absolutely. Charlotte, do you want to demonstrate the seatbelt assist? Oh, sure. This one's unlocked, so that's good. This piece of plastic in my pocket. But you can see, this is what it looks like when it's flush. Grab up. Look at all, everything I can access. Also, of course, you don't have to stand on the wheel to do this. You can't open the door and just stand on the door sill yep. or anything along those lines. But yeah, I love that feature. I think it's super fun. And because this is such a big vehicle and because it's so flat, it allows you to be really creative with your space and you have tons of space storage opportunities up there in the back seat and at the row, it's really module. Mm -hmm. uh, we're already at 27 minutes. So oh, I don't golly. think we'll do a proper Q&A session just for the sake of time. We definitely did this video a little bit more in depth. I, do you wanna pick a few questions each yeah. to answer? I'd love to. Okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna go to the top. <laughs> um, driver monitoring system not available for Canada. I see the US ones have. So the camera that watches the driver, let's say, we don't have that exactly. We haven't yet. No. Um, I know it has been announced for the 2025 Tucson. Um, however, I'm wondering, and I don't know how the technology works. I'm not an engineer. I'm really not even that smart. So I make car YouTube videos. No. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? Um, but I'm wondering if it has something to do with the fingerprint scanner as well, because that's kind of roughly in the position as well. Yep. Um, let's see. I just wanted to read this comment because it made me laugh. So I mentioned camping earlier and Abe said, I'll go camping, but if I see any bugs, I'm out. <laughs> and you should yeah. see it, our forte right over there. Oh my goodness, yeah, it's got a little waspy wasp in there. <laughs> um, I believe Char is always the one who climbs on the car and never you thumbnail. It's true. It's truly my intrusive thoughts. I'm like, oh, I kind of want to do this and then I do it. Um, is it cheaper than a Defender? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Better warranty. You know, um, no hybrids, that's a shame. So there certainly is hybrids in the Santa Fe mm -hmm. lineup. However, there is no hybrid ultimate calligraphy unless you were one of the lucky people that got the NHL edition. I love to say that if there's something you want from Hyundai or Kia, make it known. Leave it in the comments, mm -hmm. let us know because you guys mentioned a lot of features like wireless CarPlay and what else? Something else we got recently that I was not expecting. Were switch, switches and dials? Yes, switch. This switches has and dials. heads up display. Heads I didn't display, talk about yeah. this, but this vehicle does have a heads up display. Yep. Um, but I would love to see an ultimate calligraphy hybrid. I think it makes a lot of sense, and the people obviously will want it. So let us know. Tell us. Tell us. Obviously, we don't make them, but maybe Hyundai will see it. Um, 
when are you guys going to test drive the car? So we're still waiting on a callig or calligraphy, just a Santa Fe in general that isn't sold. Because mm -hmm. this is a sold unit, we're obviously not going to drive this person's car, just because. Uh, when are they fixing the rear view recall so I can pick mine up? As far as I know, I didn't know of a rear view. I haven't heard view. of anything for the rear view. No. Are you in Canada, Ontario? Is, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> Did Gabby have a bad hair day yesterday? I have a bad hair day every day. No, you don't. I, I don't. Um, uh, people were asking about MSRP. MSRP for this vehicle is $53,499. Or else yeah. I didn't say that. Oh, I think on that note, maybe we should end off today's video. We're at 30 minutes now. All right. All right. So it was a longer video. I'm sorry. Usually we like to do a longer Q&A, but it just means leave your comments down below as yes. a regular posted video, and we'll do our very best to answer them for you. And stay tuned for tonight's 6 p.m. video as well. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting one, and it might actually be the Santa Fe's competitor. Mm. So take care. Have a good rest of your day. And tomorrow, we should tease tomorrow. Yes. So tomorrow, we're actually at an event. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> so if you don't have, if you're not following myself and Gabby on social media, make sure you do so because we'll put information there as to what we're doing for live, if we're able to do one, and also I guess if we're able to, if do, we're one. Able to do one. Yeah, that is all. All right, thank you everybody. <laughs> bye bye.